and here you go that's a little nice you can't really see in there because they built it so it's high up and the babies are down there so it's so cute i think i saw somewhere here this one it's not a pretty one but it could work let me cut that I'm gonna say gonna have to hold it. Alright. That one and then they're not as red as I want them to be, but they'll be adequate. Um oops. Pick that one up. These ones are new. This is a red one. My pink one. And another little one and then these are the cool sunny day and I think we'll paint one of these on our rose painting so let's get it all together um see if I can adjust the settings a bit why is it so dark got a light on you going to so we'll paint this one just a quick little study I'm not going to be worried about the leaf now so I'm just going to pull that off and there we go and what it is in real life and we'll just paint it as well markings as well, there's a little bit of brown there and then the top I can't really see what's going on there but we'll just map that in a little bit of green there and a few little markings Okay, so I'm going to choose the colors. Definitely going to use some of the nickel as a yellow, and um, some permanent sap green. Just going to drop it in on the side there. And then the nickel as a yellow is from the Core Watercolor brand, but you can use transparent yellow as well. Um, and I'm going to paint on art hot press watercolor paper. So the red that I'm planning on using is the cadmium red light, which is that one there. And then I'll drop in a little bit of the permanent carmine. These are little brushes that I bought from Etsy. Um, it's lovely little travel brushes. And we might paint a few leaves as well for next time. I'm just going to pop that one in there exactly like it was. Um, let me put it on the side there. It might fall around all the time. That's fine. So I'm going to map that in. Take it up to there. A little bit of the brown mix there painting slightly bigger than what it is so you can see and that's all from the rose bushes so I just want to see if you can see the line drawing it's quite light okay so I always have two glasses of water one is clean clean water that I keep clean and then the other one is where I dip in my brush with all the watercolor pigments on so that I don't muddy my watercolors. I'm going to wet this. Obviously I used this brush just to pick up all the pigments so there's a little bit of red pigment still on the brush but that's fine. I don't want any puddles. I want to keep it nice and shiny. Just a soft sheen on the paper. And I just dab up most of the excess water so that I don't have puddles. 
and I'm going to use this cadmium red light with a bit of the nickel as a yellow I'm just going to drop some of that nickel as a yellow over this whole section and then I just move it around with my brush And if there's too much pigment, just use your brush to soak it up. A little bit of the permanent sap green. I want to drop some of it in this bottom section here. Then I just wipe my brush on tissue paper and move it up towards the yellow section there. And this brush holds quite a lot of water, so just be careful. Sometimes it all runs onto the paper. I'm going to go in with that red. It's like a brown red color. You can use some of your sepia mix just to drop in the cadmium red light. Or it will give you the same color. You can also just add your red first and then just layer it with a very watery wash of this brown like a sepia over your red where you want that darker brown rusty brown color again just a little bit of the permanent sap green and i want to leave that highlighted section as light as possible for now the water is quite shiny on my paper and then i just use the tip of my brush to move the paint around first layering all of the lightest little colors and then I go in with a darker mix as you can see even though I didn't dip my brush in the water there's still a lot of water in the rest of the brush and I just soften it so I just dip my brush on the, the tissue paper next to me just to get rid of the excess water just a drop of yellow And now I pick up a bit more of the nickel as a yellow. The consistency is much thicker and I'm just dabbing my brush all over this bottom part here. And then I leave certain sections a little bit lighter. So there's highlighted sections that shine through all of these little layers. I'm doing the same with the red. Some parts will be much darker than other sections. And I'm also careful of that highlighted section that I want to leave as light as possible. So I'm just dabbing it and then softening it again with the tip of my brush. I go over and over until I'm happy with the color. Again, a little bit darker. Leave the highlight as light as possible. And on this section right there, the paper was a little bit too wet from too much water on my brush. So the minute I dropped in the yellow pigment, it just went all over the place. So I would have to remove that with a little scrubber brush and then smooth the paper. Sometimes it's just best to pick up your hair dryer and just dry the paper completely. I touched the paper and it felt um, dry, but it wasn't dry completely. So it made a big mess. But it still looks fine. I will have to just fix it and made it, make it a little bit bigger than what I was going to paint it. Uh, in the end it turned out okay. Um, and um, I could fix it and soften those little lines that was on that right hand side there. And again I'm just using some of the water on my brush just to soften those little lines. I used the hairdryer just to dry the paper completely and then I smooth out the paper because now some of the tooth of the paper was lifted because I had to use a scrubber brush to lighten it. I went back to just smooth out some of those little hard lines from the excess pigment that was there. I'm going to leave that to dry completely and I'm going to just go over that whole section and make that right hand side a little bit bigger than what I wanted to from the start. Dropping in a bit of the dark brown sepia mix again. You can see a little marking on the left hand side so I'm just painting it in. My brush is not too wet here. 
Okay, I'm going to leave that section to dry completely. And now I want to darken a little section on the bottom. So just pick up a bit of your sepia mix. Again, any brown will do. Whatever you have will be perfect for this painting. You don't have to, if you don't have sepia, uh, you might use a little bit of Payne's Grey mixed with a drop of yellow ochre. That's fine. I want a yellow green mix, so I use some of the sap green with the nickel as a yellow. I want a drop of that on this bottom part of the stem and you can just see how much pigment is on this brush just use your tissue to wipe it off if it's too much I want to leave that highlighted section there a bit more of this permanent sap green just want to drop in a little bit on that section there I want to create a lot of little markings on this side of my rose hip. I just smooth out those little sections. I want quite a nice neat section there. Hopefully we won't mess up this section. The left hand side. A bit more of the red. And I hope this is dry now because I gave it quite a lot of time to dry completely. It looks a lot better. So I'm just going to adjust it a little bit because of the pigment that went onto the paper there. So it's always best to wait for your paper to dry completely. And if you're not sure, just use a hairdryer. That way you'll be sure that your paper is completely dry. <laughs> Already you can see it looks a lot better. I leave that highlighted section as light as possible there on the rose hip and I will just smooth it out a little bit later. For now I want to make sure that that whole section is dry completely before I go back and use a clean wash over this whole rose hip. I don't want to have too much of the pigment in that highlighted section so I have to be very very careful not to have too much water and too much pigment on that section right now again I want to darken the top part there so just use that sepia mix you'll see I leave a slight little highlight section there and if some of the pigment uh, flow into the bottom part it's perfectly fine I don't mind that I just leave some of it and pick up whatever I don't want on that section. A drop of that dark mix on the right hand side there. And now I want to darken this little part of the stem. And I just have to be careful that I don't have too much pigment on my brush. I don't want it to go all over uh, and go on to the bottom section where I want the green as well so it's a bit tricky here just have to be a little bit more careful than usually so just make sure that I have enough pigment to move around and if I need more I will just pick some up I don't have a lot of water on my brush I just pick up some of the pigment but more of the permanent sap green I'm going to darken that little section a little bit over there so just dab my brush over that part I still want some of that dark pigment that I painted on earlier to shine through these little sections that I'm painting on now so I just use my brush and then I smooth it out a little bit with the tip of my brush and as you can see this brush has a beautiful point beautiful sharp point and it's quite easy to paint with it especially if you paint small detail now I want to soften around that highlighted section so I just have clean water on my brush and I just go softly and carefully over there gosh I don't want to mess this part up again 
So I'm just very, very careful over that section and just smooth it. I don't want it to be too bright and I'm quite happy with that. Now I'm going to pick up some of the dark mix and I'm just going to drop it in at the bottom there. Again, I want to darken this section so I want to keep it also as neat as possible so at the same time I check that my sides are very neat and clean. I want to darken this part again very carefully. Sap green. A little bit of a darker mix there. So I'm just darkening each little section now. Just adjusting some of the tonal values. And if I see it is too dark, I just use my brush and smooth it out. And you can also lift out some of your pigment with your brush. I just want to mix a little bit more color on my palette just to darken these sections again very carefully, not too much. I might go back and darken a, a few other sections, but I'm quite happy with that. It was a quick study. And a drop more of the sepia mix in there. So I want to just darken this little section here. It's very light. So just with the tip of my brush. And I'm just dropping in, leaving a few little highlights in there. And then neaten up this little section here. And a little bit of a lighter section here. more of this dark green and pick up a drop of the sepia wipe it on a tissue Move the green there. Okay. just want to darken this section again and this part as well so watercolor is all about layers layer 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 especially if you want to paint a lot of detail want to darken this again just adjusting some of the color smooth out that section there and this is just a little study so I'm not too worried about all of the perfect detail it's just a quick study and it's for fun it literally will take you 20 minutes to 30 minutes if you have time in a day just to do a quick little a few studies if you feel like painting but you don't feel like painting for instance a whole rose these little studies are very very relaxing and fun to do i hope you enjoyed this and you will join us soon again for some more and don't stress if you mess something up it happens and it's fine you can just paint it again <laughs>